Even just like walk in front of the camera, like real close. <laughs> no, not, not yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to another episode. Today I'm going to show you how to install headers on your car. Now today I'm working on my brother's 2006 Mini Cooper, and right now it's got essentially just a cat back exhaust on it. So right now it's got the stock headers on it. Uh, with both cats attached to a Megan Racing cat back exhaust. Now as it stands, it sounds really good. But the thing is, today I'm gonna make it sound even better. Now today, oh, with these, with these mounted on the car, these are gonna make the car breathe, it's gonna make it give it more power, and you're gonna see a noticeable difference in exhaust note too. Now before you actually go ahead and start to remove your headers and install your new ones, um, what you're going to have to do before that is you're going to have to get new bolts so we can install them and not have problems. Now I've run into this problem before where you've taken the part off and then you're screwed because either the bolt doesn't fit or you run into some problem where you need new bolts and it sucks having to get them once you already started the job. So I'm going to go down to BMW and buy new bolts that bolt up the header to the head. So this way I'm not going to run into any problems or compatibility issues or I won't be screwed over with the car in the air for two days. So if you guys are doing this and you guys are working on say an older car, definitely, definitely keep this in mind. Now the Mini Cooper that I'm going to be working on is a 2006, so it's basically had a decade of rust. Now it's been driven in the winter, so I don't doubt that the bolts that are on there are going to be corroded. So that's why I'm going there to get new ones. So $43 later, I got the little bolts that I need for the, uh, for the headers. Now it's just a matter of throwing the new headers on the car. I'm pumped. So everything that we're going to need today is basically right here on this bench. So you're going to need some adjustable wrenches, you're going to need some sockets, you're going to need oxygen sensor sockets, you're going to need a rubber hammer, you might need some exhaust pliers, some adapters, you're going to need some WD-40 if some of your bolts are stupid, you're going to need an impact wrench along with the appropriate impact sockets, and don't forget to get all new hardware. Now this is very important. The new bolts and everything are going to make your life a lot easier, especially when you're putting everything back together. The reason being is that if everything is nice and new, you're not going to have rust or any corrosion to worry about when you're installing it back on the car. I forgot the most important part. You're also going to need these guys, your headers. Now to get started, get the car and jack it up in the air as high as it goes and make sure that it's safely put on jack stands. Now to get access to the headers, you're going to need to remove and move anything that's basically in the way. So for this Mini Cooper, I've got to remove this top strut bar that's in the way of the headers. This way I'll be able to get to the exhaust manifold, the bolts on the back side of there, along with the oxygen sensors that are behind the engine. Once you have access to back there, you need to loosen all those bolts that are back there. Now they shouldn't be too tight. For the Mini Cooper right here, they should only be tightened to 26 newton meters of torque. Um, so it shouldn't be that much. Now if there's a little bit of corrosion, it might be a little bit more difficult, but it still shouldn't be that tight. You should be able to do all of this stuff by hand. The next step is grab an adjustable wrench with a socket and you have to loosen all the bolts off of the back side of the header. Now depending on what style header you're working with or the, the amount of room you have, you might need to attach an extension on the back of it to get it to fit. Now for the Mini Cooper, I had to use a 10 mil with an adapter along with an actual hand ratchet and you'll see what that is later down the road, but it was very limited space to work with. Now because the headers are basically pretty big, there's not going to be that much room to work with. So if you can manage to get anything back there, you might have to use your hand to do it, you might need the actual ratchet, whatever you can do, get back there and take out or loosen all the bolts. The next step is to disconnect any electrical sensors that are going to the exhaust system. So on your exhaust you're going to have at least two O2 sensors and you're going to need to safely disconnect these so we can drop the exhaust manifold off of the car. You should have one before and after each primary catalytic converter you have on your car. So if you've got a four banger you're only going to have two O2 sensors. If you've got a V6 or a V8 you're probably going to have at least three. So safely disconnect these from the car and then we'll get to working underneath the car. The bolts that are attached to the rear of the cat back exhaust are usually not reusable. Because they face the most amount of corrosion, you have to either torch the bolts off or grind them off. If you don't feel confident doing that, before you do your manifold swap, go to your local exhaust shop and get them to replace the bolts for you. The 30 bucks that you spend towards this will save you many, many headaches. So I got my older brother to grind off the bolts. For the bottom one, he was able to get an angle grinder in there and he was able to chop off the top part of the bolt and we were able to hit it through taking off the exhaust bolt. Now for the other one, there's not that much room back there. What he actually had to do was he got a Dremel tool with a cutting disc and he cut it off 
similarly to the angle grinder, but only because it's smaller, it would take a little bit more time. With the bottom bolts now out, go back to the top of the header and remove the loose nuts that we already took out. Now, once those are completely gone and out of it, you have to be careful that you don't ruin any of the O2 sensor wiring that's still hooked up to the exhaust manifold. Now, you have to safely take it out. Now, for this car, you just have to jimmy it around the front sway bar and a couple pieces of heat shield, but you can get it out, no problem. With the exhaust manifold now off of the car, we can actually take off the oxygen sensors that are still mounted onto it. Now as you can see right here, there's one sensor up top. You can either use a 22 millimeter oxygen sensor socket, so something that's specifically designed for this, or if you don't have that, you can also go with the means by using a 22 millimeter wrench and you'll basically get the exact same job done. Not only is the piping on our aftermarket headers larger in diameter, but they're also equal length headers. So what this means is it's going to allow the engine to get rid of its exhaust gases much better than the OEM ones. You can also see that on the new one, there's no catalytic converters. There's a little resonator after the flex pipe, and that's it. On the OEM headers, you can see that there's two catalytic converters that will restrict exhaust flow. If you look through the OEM exhaust manifold, you can actually see the honeycomb catalyst that makes up your catalytic converter. Now you can see that it's very restrictive. If you were to essentially take that out, that's what our new system is. If you look through the new one, you can see that it's just that. You can see it through and through with nothing restricting it. Now something that's nice is that the Megan Racing headers come with a warranty. It's nice that a company will stand behind their products. Now it's time to put everything back together. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get my primary oxygen sensor and thread it into the headers. The primary O2 sensor reads the air fuel mixture inside the engine and adjusts it accordingly. So it's very important that you put this in and make sure that it's tight. If it's not tight, any leaking air will give the oxygen sensor an improper reading. Alright, now grab your headers and then go underneath the car. Now you're going to want to jimmy your exhaust system now up to the engine so you can mount it up to the top. If you're looking for some extra hands, you can always use your jack to support the bottom side of the headers just so you don't have to hold it down there. Then go ahead and attach the test pipe along with just tightening up by hand all the bolts and oxygen sensors down below. Now once it's on by hand, you're then going to go ahead and grab some ratchets and just tighten everything down so it's in there for good. Now make sure that whenever you're doing this, you're going to be putting gaskets in between both pieces of metal. So between the cat back exhaust and the test pipe, you're putting a gasket and between the test pipe and the header you're going to be putting another gasket. Now that we have the bottom side of our headers installed on the car, we now need to mount the top part up towards the engine. So what that involves is getting the gasket, putting between the header and the actual head, and then all you have to do is run the bolts through them. So you've got eight bolts, you got to run each one through there, and then make sure that you tighten these down to the appropriate torque spec. If you tighten these too much on your head, if you warp it or crack it or even damage a thread, you're going to be swearing at yourself because it's going to cost you a lot of money to get that fixed. So for the head, it's 18 foot-pounds of torque, and for the bolts that connect down below, it's 45 foot-pounds of torque. Whew. Okay, guys, so a little hiccup that we ran into is that because our aftermarket header tube, the spot for the primary O2 sensor is actually in a different spot and it's further down the exhaust than the original one. So that means one of two things. You can either do one, plug it with a little screw that came with the aftermarket headers, or what we're going to do is we're going to actually have to cut these wires and wire up four longer ones so that we can put this on the car and make it run efficiently. The primary O2 sensor that you've got hooked up to your car reads the air fuel mixture ratio that goes inside of each cylinder and that comes out of the car. With the O2 sensor in, we can adjust the air fuel mixture inside the, the combustion chamber by looking at these numbers that come out of the exhaust. Now with this not there, it's going to run off of standard numbers that the computer has built into itself. So the ECU has, I think it's 196 different numbers and it's going to look at throttle, speed, load and a whole bunch of other things to determine what air fuel mixture you need inside your engine. So just as a temporary fix, we're going to plug the primary oxygen sensor so the car will still be drivable. With it like this, it'll burn a bit more gas than normal, but that's an okay trade-off. The car will still work, be drivable, and still get you from A to B. Now I'll be throwing up a video as to how to extend the wires for any electrical circuit. For this circumstance, I'll be extending the wires for the oxygen sensor. I'll also be putting up a video as to how you'd remove a check engine light after installing catless headers or cat deletes. There will be links to both of these videos in the description box, so stay tuned for those. So for now, I'm just going to put everything back together, and then I'll fix everything in my future video. 
Now guys, something to note too is that if you guys are going to be installing these on your car, make sure that these are legal in your area. So if you can't take off your cats or any emissions things, you can't exactly do this catless exhaust system. Now if you want to get by, you could go with high flow cats, and as long as it still passes your emissions test, you're fine. Now this depends from state to state, or from where I'm from, from province to province. If you guys have any questions regarding the video, please post your questions down in the comment section below, and I'd be happy to help. Again guys, thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it was warm.